Hello YouTube and welcome to another episode today with me multi -tech Spec. So uh, today we're going to learn how to set up a little website for ourselves. Uh, I'm using a uh, WAN connection to a server which I have down in London because uh, I'm no longer in London but uh, shouldn't be too bad. We uh, have our server up, up and running here. It's uh, Windows Server 2012. I've now upgraded to the new operating system uh, and uh, I've been tinkering with it a little bit uh, but never mind so this is going to be a little bit slow you might see a little bit of jagging here but um, hopefully that shouldn't uh, devalue the performance of this video uh, in any way okay well first of all let's get started by me telling you what we're, what we're trying to achieve here okay so the theory behind this video is that we're going to uh, create a web server which can be accessed uh, both internally and externally. Now I'm not going to show you the external access bit um, because you can see that on uh, my RDP video and it's exactly the same process in which I uh, opened up a port uh, in that case it was 3389 and that allowed me to do RDP over a, over a virtual WAN connection if you will. Um, yeah, uh, a, a WAN connection from my computer to this router which I am running on now uh, without the need of static routes or uh, any kind of protocol like that. Simply just a, a, a uh, the uh, extranet IP address uh, logged on to a DNS server and um, they here you go, like you're away, really, just literally like that. Um, yeah, that's really what it is. Um, in this video, the ports that you need to forward are port 80 or uh, 8080. Pick your fancy, same sort of thing. It really is the same thing, it's just you just need to unbox the uh, hypertext, uh, just HTTP, so a hypertext transfer protocol. Okay, okay, so enough riffraff. Let's get on with it. So the first thing that you want to do is go to manage, add roles, and then you want to go to internet information services. Okay, so that's down here. Web server IAS. Tick that. Add feature. Next. Okay, and then there's additional features here that you can add if you are making a specific type of uh, Internet Information Services ser server that you're trying to give to your clients. Um, but uh, if you're installing uh, .NET frame Framework Features 3.5 then um, you will need to go to Microsoft because there is no uh, version 2 and version 3 of the .NET Framework included. Okay, so you'll need to download the SP1, then specify its location, and say that, okay, it's in here. And this is especially important if you're doing um, Windows deployment services on uh, Windows Server 2012, because it doesn't include it natively like Windows Server 2008 did, where you could just um, do it directly on the fly. Okay, so let's click Next. Okay, Next. And... Uh, like I say, more features that you can have. FTP server. We'll look at the FTP server at another time. Uh, for now, we're just going to install the uh, web server, Internet Information Services. So next. Restore, restart the destination server automatically if required. Yes. It's especially important that you tick that, actually, because um, the web server itself uh, can have bugs in it which don't allow it to... Um, to what's the word I'm looking for? Like uh, operate properly. That's it. Yeah, doesn't allow it to operate properly. So it just uh, kind of goes inside a loop and just doesn't work properly. It doesn't work as well as you want it to. Uh, so yeah, I don't know why it's not ticked on by default. But anyway, let's click install. Take a few minutes. 
So we'll just skip past just, uh, this bit in the video. And uh, I'd just like to bring up to your attention uh, in the meantime, there is uh, export configuration settings which can be used in PowerShell. And uh, there you go, that's the uh, explanation. So it makes a little XML file. Let's put that back on there, shall we? Makes a little XML file, usage in the PowerShell configuration commands, and uh, automate the same installation with all those features in there. So I've got no real idea how you use it, but. Uh, I'm guessing from those from that command that it's given us, uh, we could write that down and uh, put it directly into PowerShell. Okay, so it's completed. Let's click close, and let's go to the Internet Information Services panel on the left. Let's, uh, go to the Internet Information Services Manager. Uh, I got to that menu just by left-clicking directly on the server. Click on that. Let's expand this, shall we? Okay, Internet Information Services 8, and uh, there you go, local host connection. I would like to point out that I haven't statically assigned the adapters on this uh, on this PC or this server. So um, to do that, what you need to do is just go down here. Come on, give me the start bar. There we go, start. And then you need to just left click on my computer. Properties. Nope. Okay. Oh yes, you can go to properties actually. I think. Yep. Uh, no, you can't. Okay. So you need to go to. Yeah, control panel is a good place. Go to control panel. Then go to network and internet. Network sharing center. Network change adapter settings. Left click on the adapter. Properties. And then uh, IPv IPv4. Properties. And then from obtain uh, IP address automatically, you just need to set that down to uh, the actual configuration of the computer. So in this case, if you go to PowerShell, type in IP config. It's an old school command, I'm sure there's a new one for PowerShell, but it gives us the uh, prerequisites that we want. So uh, it's uh, 12 server and the one gateway. So if I just type that all in there. Okay, just click on use the following IP address 192.168.0.1. Uh, oh dear, it seems we have a problem, Houston. No, we don't. Please go away. That's one nine two. One six eight zero one. One. This is one two. This is uh, the same. One nine two. One six eight zero one for me. So um, you might have a different DNS server, but just check inside your um, inside your router for what your DNS server is. You could enter your prop your private IP address, which is like mine, or you could enter your external IP address, which is like a ninety or anything up to. Um, ooh, let's see, it's anything up to one nine two. Yeah, one nine two one six eight. There are some the exceptions in between. Um, but that's nothing really to worry about. But uh, if you're running on a standard browser, then you're bound to have a private IP address. And my mouse has died. Brilliant. Oh, here we go. We're back. Okay, let's click OK. Click close. Okay, it seems that we've got a problem. Oh, no, it's fine. Okay, then. Let's go back. Let's go back. And I've already enabled. I've already routed port 80. To see how I did that, please visit my uh, remote uh, information. My uh, what was it called? The remote desktop on uh, all internet devices or something like that, or all devices. Uh, just check that video out. And uh, actually, I'll post it as a response to this video once I finish making it. And um, yeah, so that's really how you activate it. So now let's go down to our server. 
And as you can see, it's prompted me to get Microsoft Web Platform Installer, which allows us to do things like PHP and advanced features, for example, SQL. And you can also customize the HTML page using Web Matrix, which is a free program downloaded with this, uh, this uh, program, if you will. So let's click no on that because I don't need it. And let's go to the actual website itself. Sites. And as you can see, it's listed in a directory on the actual drive itself. So that's web root, system drive by netpub. And as you can see, the binding is illustrated by a star, a dot, and an 80, saying HTTP. So that means that the HTTP server should now be active. And to verify this, let's have a view. Let's have a look at it. Okay. Okay, so let's go there, just browse it. And it should come up with the Internet Information Services screen. There we go, Internet Information Services 8 installed on the computer in uh, Windows Internet Explorer 10. Very nicely come up for us. And as you can see, it comes up for us. Now, let's say, for example, we're on a different network and we like are wanting to access this uh, server with all this with all this incredible information on it. So, how do we do that? How how is it possible for something that has an internal private IP address to be found on an external using an external IP address? Well, the answer is network address translation. Okay, and uh, this little module inside all routers enables us to um, translate a private IP address into a public IP, IP address and vice versa. Okay, so that's that little bit of translation there. So, now we need to understand what the, what the private, what the extranet IP address is. Okay, we already have our intranet IP address, that was 192.168.0.12, but our extranet IP address will be different. As I will now just as I will now demonstrate. Okay, yes, I forgot to mention um, that Internet Explorer is very very picky about what it chooses uh, in terms of uh, what you go on. It's just a security flaw, but uh, that's all we have at the moment, don't we? I don't think I've installed Chrome on this. Nope, I haven't. I'm only got Internet Explorer, so that will have to do for now. Okay, well, that's not really a problem. So, uh, what is my IP? Yeah, come on, let's just go. Let's get on with it. Add and add. It's not malicious, so it doesn't really matter. What is my IP? Come on, let's just add it. It's not malicious. Uh, I don't really care for that, don't really care for that, don't care for that. And there we have it, 90, 90, 193, which I cannot, for some reason, partake. Okay, so 90, 193.101, 90.193.101.174, was it? Uh, about internet, yeah, okay, fine. Probably come up with an error message because I haven't entered it properly, but yeah, okay. 90.193.101.174. Oh, 90.193.101.174. Hmm, interesting. So let me just double check that. One seven four port eighty. Oh, wow! So it hasn't found my IP address. Interesting. Oh, oh, I know why. What's the problem, ladies and gentlemen? I've been foolish. I've actually routed it to my main computer rather than my virtual one. So when you go into your firewall rules if you have a Netgear router, 
please be sure to enter the actual IP address of the virtual computer instead of the uh, local computer which you're working on. It's very important that otherwise you'll get that type of error. So if I just go back to my actual uh, computer, so it'll uh, take a bit, take a while. Okay, I'll record the inbox. Thank you very much. Yeah. And if you just go down here into there, see, I have the Netgear, but as you can see, it's wrong. This is this is not right on the HTTP site. So uh, I'll just go to HTTP. Edit. Okay. Uh, service. La 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 la. Fine. That's cool. Uh, we just need that one. Edit. Fine. Twelve. Apply. And we should technically have internet connectivity. Let's have a look, shall we? And as you can see, et voila, internet connectivity, because, like I've said, uh, the IP address, <laughs> that's all it was, a bloody IP address, well, be the death of us, network engineers, I'll tell you.